go ahead and get started. Um, it seems like this is not a huge group tonight. So Rachel, if you want to go ahead and take your um, camera, if you want to put that on, you can. If you don't, that's okay too. We can be a little bit informal with a small group. Uh, my name is Sheila Gold. I am the Executive Director of Admissions at Tulane School of Professional Advancement, and I am joined by my colleagues, Amanda Hassan, who's the Director of Advising, and Maddie Duncan, who is making the magic happen behind the screen um, and moving us along. Um, but hi, Rachel, do you want to just sort of take yourself? Um, oh, wait, we'll let Keisha join us too. Um, See. Hi, Keisha. Um, I'm Sheila. I'm the Executive Director of Admission, and Amanda Hassan is our Director of Advising. She and I are going to be doing the um, webinar tonight, um, and it's kind of a small crowd tonight, so we figured we could have more of like a little like small group discussion. Um, so if you and Rachel wouldn't mind just kind of taking yourselves off a of mute and telling us like where you're from, um, you know, what school you're currently studying in and what you might be interested in studying at Tulane, we can have like a little bit of a more tailored discussion. Okay. So okay. You wanna go, I don't, you can go first, Keisha. Okay. Okay, um, my name is Keisha Laurent Godin. Um, I'm a graduate of Dillard University and I am uh, currently pursuing or about to pursue um, legal studies in the paralegal program. Excellent. It's an excellent program. You made a great choice. Thank you. Uh, and Rachel, what about you? I am, I'll be graduating from Delgado in this coming December with um, my associates in general studies with my concentration in psych. And then I'm transferring to you guys to pursue my degree in Homeland Security. Terrific. All right. Well, the two of you picked like two like really top notch programs. So um, I'm excited for you all. So, um, you know, tonight we're just going to um, tell you a little bit about the history of the school, talk to you a little bit about um, how PTK fits in the benefits um, to you all of that program and your time at Tulane. And then honestly, like it's informal. So if you have any questions, just sort of like speak up like you're not going to hurt my feelings if you sort of jump on in and say wait a minute tell me more about that or i have a question about that um and that's sort of how we'll handle the evening um it should only take us about half an hour um but i always say to students if you have any questions don't be shy like go ahead and either send us an email or um just ask during this program right now so um a little bit about what we call sopa which is our um nickname for the school of professional advancement so Tulane SOPA is one of the smaller schools within the larger Tulane University. Um, it happens to house the two programs that you all are interested in, um, which is how you found yourself here this evening. We also um, have a fairly robust um, program for PTK students. And so that's why you all will be studying with us um, for the coming semesters. Um, a little bit of a history of Tulane. It was founded in 1834 as the Medical College of Louisiana. It was actually founded in a response to the yellow fever epidemic, which was really um, sort of decimating Southeast Louisiana and the Gulf Coast. And so there was a need for um, medical attention. So Tulane filled that gap. Ironically, here we are in the middle of another pandemic. Um, so what's old is new again. Um, but what's interesting for you all as future SOPA students is to understand that really it was only about 50 years after the university itself was founded that um, the very first iteration of Tulane SOPA was created. And um, Tulane SOPA has always been the part of the university that's committed to um, educating um, professional students. So it, the commitment to the school was to our own community members in New Orleans who were either finishing up a degree or who were working professionals who wanted to come back to the university and um, get a degree from Tulane, but they weren't sort of the 
the, I live in Chicago and I want to move for, you know, onto campus for sort of that um, traditional four year college experience. So you all have found yourself right at the right place. Um, and so we have been doing this for over 130 years and our students feel that they know that we do a good job um, and that we're committed to you all, not only getting you in the front door, but also to getting you um, across the graduation stage. So um, we'll talk a little bit about our student success and support. Um, so a little bit that we're gonna go over and touch on is um, our ability to um, offer classes both online and on ground. Um, we actually were doing online learning way before the pandemic. We've been in this space for close to five years. Um, we have a tremendous amount of expertise in this area. So we'll talk about that a little bit. Um, the strength of our program and our faculty, um, student support, we actually, offer, I believe, the best student support um, of any of the other schools on the campus. Um, I always like to tell students, I have all three of my degrees from Tulane. Um, two of them um, are from two different schools. And um, I think that SOPA has the best um, student support. And I am jealous because I was not at SOPA and I know that I didn't have as good student support as, as SOPA students do. Um, I will talk a little bit about the affordability and the flexibility. We are also um, priced different than the rest of the school, cheaper. Um, and that's part of our commitment to our own community. So we wanted to make Tulane accessible to working adults or degree completers who wanted to come back um, and get a degree from our incredible university right here in their backyard. And so part of that is making it accessible, not only by having flexible classes, but also having a different price point. Um, and then, of course, just the power of the Tulane degree. Uh, it's very well recognized, not only in New Orleans and Louisiana, but also the rest of the country. So we feel like when our students graduate with a Tulane degree, it helps them get hired. And let's face it, that's kind of like why we all go to school is to get a job at the end of the day. So it's nice to have um, a degree that will help open those doors. So I'm going to talk a little bit about online learning at SOPA. So um, we are, our philosophy of courses that you may take that are online um, is a little bit different than what you might find at other schools. Um, we intention, so, so let me explain how we do this. We have on our staff. Um, what are called instructional designers. And instructional designers are master's level educated educators. So instead of going and getting their master's in education to be a teacher, they got their master's to um, become instructional designers. And so their area of expertise is that they love understanding classroom instruction and translating the, tra the sort of the traditional classroom curriculum and experience to the online space. So they build classes knowing that students are gonna be taking them online and they intentionally create opportunities for interaction. So it's not just kind of like flipping through a PowerPoint on your own and then like turning in a paper or maybe you're answering short questions. Um, you have um, simulation videos, you have interaction, interactive projects, you have small group work. So we, for instance, could be working on a project together, right? Like we could be in class, all five of us, and then we'll be on a little Zoom meeting and we'll have discussions and um, we can put together our answers together or maybe go through um, some um, study guides together very interactive and also lots of opportunities to get your note get to know your classmates and your professors um, and so you will have monthly meetings with your classes you'll also have guest speakers and opportunity to reach out to um, your faculty members um, but there's discussion boards and there's simulations and there's group projects and so it feels very interactive and engaging so that is a really very different experience than you may have at other schools so we'd like to be very clear about pointing that out. Um, just a little bit more about online learning at SOPA. And th this number was developed before COVID. So we have an additional year of numbers that we can put on top of this. But a year ago, um, we had educated um, close to 14,000 students and completed over 31,000 hours um, of coursework um, in the online space. We have eight master's degrees, 11 graduate certificates, four post-baccalaureate certificates, 
and um, over 300 courses that are developed specifically for the online space. And what's also interesting is that we train our faculty to teach online. So we have over 200 faculty members that actually get trained to speak to you in the online format and to deliver curriculum in the online format. So um, that does sort of translate into a much more sophisticated experience for our students. Question. Yeah. So I know that you said that y'all were doing the online thing before COVID. Were y'all doing, yep. so I, this, my stuff at Delgado, cause I work, I'm actually right behind, well, I guess in front of y'all, I work for the fire department at headquarters. Oh yeah. So uh, I've been strictly online there. Um, so our online class now you could you could do virtual now but were y'all doing like these virtual zoom classes before covid or just like yeah we've been doing them for years we've been doing them for about four years yeah yep yep so actually when covid hit it was a little bit weird rachel i'm sure you're gonna be like oh i'll give you a little bit like peek behind the scenes of sopa so covid hit we all got kicked off camp, you know, like the rest of the world, right? Like we all had to go home and whatever. And so we sort of huddled together um, our administrative team and it was like, okay, we have to translate to the online space. And it was almost like we didn't have much to do. We had so many classes, all of our graduate programs are online. Mm -hmm. So really it was the undergraduate space where some of our classes were online, but a lot of them were also on ground. Um, but a lot of them were, you could have done them on ground or online. So it was already built. It was, so for us, it was a little anticlimactic, like where the rest of the world, even, the, even other parts of the university were like, oh my gosh, how are we going to do that? We were like, all right, this was not a bad meeting. Like catch you ladies again next week when we totally figured out this, you know, how to do this in like two minutes. Mm -hmm. So we totally had um, the capability. Literally the only thing we had to do is add some cameras into our classroom. Like that would like literally that was it. Um, and even those we ended up not using because most people just use their their computers from their house. Mm -hmm. So it was a super easy transition. Yeah. Um, our students like our online space. It's super sophisticated. It really is. So um, and I so think at Delgado. Yeah, you know what? Most <laughs> it's a little bit it, it, and totally, like I can hear that. And um, I have a daughter who's um, an undergrad at a school in New York. And she was like, if I don't get out of these online classes <laughs> and it's because they weren't developed to be online. It, they had like yeah. 10 days to figure out. So they basically just threw up a bunch of classwork for these kids on their own on like message boards and canvas. And then they had some like PowerPoints that they had to read on their own. And it was like kind of garbage. That is not what this is. Um, you're going to have like interactive stuff to do and like cool experiences online. So I think, I think you're really going to appreciate it. But yeah, it, it, it's very, different. but thank you for asking the question. All right, next slide. All right. Um, I am going to kick it over to my colleague, Amanda, to talk to you a little bit about the PTK scholarship um, in a couple other slides. And then I'll jump back in a little bit about admissions. And then of course we're available for questions throughout the whole webinar. All right, um, thanks Sheila. So a little bit about why you guys are here and you wanna know more about the PTK scholarship. So the Phi Theta Kappa scholarship is um, a scholarship that kind of helps uh, fill in some of those gaps. So normally you would get financial aid um, and the financial aid would pay for your tuition and some of your fees. Well, there's some other extra additional costs when you register for classes and so the PCK scholarship is what kind of fills in those holes, right? So it helps you kind of get the extra money where you need it. Um, if you are um, a graduate of one of the schools that we're partnering with and you meet the criteria for um, both SOPA and um, for the PTK, PTK, PTK scholarship, um, once you complete the application and you're admitted, um, then all of the material that you get and that's, that's submitted to us. We also submit it to financial aid. And so then you will be, um, you'll see the scholarship um, actually credited to your account. So again, the nice thing about this is that you get you know, those expenses such as books. You may have to get extra supplies for specific classes that you're taking, um, all other types of fees. And so this is really, really helpful for students. Um, I really wish I would have had something like this, honestly, because uh, it really is helpful in terms of you planning 
uh, your semester out. So a little bit about how you get it. What's the eligibility? Um, what are the actual award amounts? So you would be eligible to receive um, up to 1500 per semester, um, but not to exceed 3000 a year. Uh, and so you have to complete an associate's degree no earlier than fall of 2018, which is when a lot of our agreements uh, and articulation agreements uh, took place. Uh, you have to be an active member in the PTK uh, program um, at the time that you just that at the time that you graduate, you have to make sure that you complete a FAFSA. And the nice thing about our department, which is what we kind of talk, we'll continue to talk about um, later, and why Sheila was saying how great our supports are, we actually have a dedicated staff member to assist students um, with FAFSA completion to make sure that everything is complete. Uh, so that's a really nice thing that we offer. Um, you have to have a minimum GPA of a 3.5, uh, apply, which is the, the easiest part is to apply to us, uh, enroll as a full-time student, which means that you have to be enrolled as uh, 12 credits or more, um, and maintain that 12 credits or more are of enrollment so that your scholarship can continuously be renewed and obviously, you know, remain in good standing while you're enrolled at SOFA. So how do you get um, involved in the program? You at the, every school has an actual um, an advisor for PTK. And so you would get in touch with one of the advisors. Don't worry, we'll send this information to you. I believe we'll send this information to you um, after this webinar so that you can have the information that you need from Delgado. And I believe our other student, um, there should be a contact for you as well. So we want to make sure that you get connected with these folks so that you apply um, on time for these scholarships. So what's your timeline? Um, I would say again, contact the PTK advisor uh, now. So starting the process early is the best way to do it, uh, especially when you're applying for the app for the scholarship, applying for FAFSA, and then applying to Tulane SOFA. So as soon as you're able to do all of those things, then we can get things kind of rolling a little bit quickly. Um, once you um, know exactly what you're going to do, we can look at your transfer credits. So for you guys, uh, we'll take up to 60 credits, um, but they still have to get reviewed by our department and by other departments across campus. And so we want to make sure that you get the maximum amount of credits possible transferred over. So we will want to start that process early because it can be a little bit lengthy. Um, and then when you become a SOFA student, you'll have an academic advisor that will work with you to actually get the credits posted. So once you kind of work with me to get the initial process started, your academic advisor who you'll be assigned to will actually get everything completed from there on and actually post your credits which also helps with your um, financial aid package. So a little more about um, the student support and success resources at SOFA. The nice thing about SOFA is that we uh, will assist you from before you apply. So when you're thinking about applying all the way to graduation, um, we have academic advisors for each program um, at the undergraduate level and at the graduate level. Um, we have um, a career counselor as well. We have access to a uh, tutoring center. We have access to other campus organizations. We have access to um, the counseling center and we have access to um, case management, which is um, a lot of great resources at Tulane. And a lot of those resources you may not realize that you need, you actually may need while you're at Tulane. Um, we have, <clears throat> the nice thing too about it is regardless of if you're attending the Elwood campus that we have or the Uptown campus, we have security and we have um, safety. So our environment is very um, welcoming. We're here again to support you throughout your whole time while you're here at SOPA. Um, and if there's any questions that we can answer for you, we definitely uh, partner with other uh, folks across campus to get those answers for you. 
The other thing to think about is um, credit for prior learning. So credit for prior learning is getting credit for your previous experience. So whether you have extensive work history in a specific area, um, if you um, have any military training or if you've done extensive community service and you've done enough to where you feel that you can um, not take a course based on that credit or that experience, uh, we can work with you to see how much you have. I think we have someone who's doing um, general legal studies. I think that's teacher, right? Um, if you, for example, let's just say you were already a paralegal and you were working for the last five to seven years in the industry. Uh, if you have that experience, we can work with you to see if you can actually use that as a credit so that you won't have to take specific classes. So let's just say it's legal writing, um, introduction to legal writing. If you've already, you know, have experience in that area, you can write a portfolio and receive credit for that actual class without taking it. Um, just like our uh, Rachel, you said you do some work with the firefighters. Um, if you have extensive training in firefighter, we can actually look at, you know, what that training looks like and see how we can translate that experience and that service over to course credit. So it's a little bit of a process. Um, you actually do a portfolio, you do an interest and you tell us where your area of expertise lies. You do a portfolio assessment. Um, and you'll work with a faculty member and they're actually graded and they'll actually say, hey, yes, this person has passed it, give them credit for, um, let's say intro to Homeland Security or intro to emergency management. So there's a couple of different ways to do that. You can do that for up to 24 credits as an undergraduate student. But keep in mind, if you wanna do that, then that would also knock out some of your transfer credits. So you can now only transfer in up to 60 credits, which includes the credit for life experience. So if you have questions about that, we can definitely talk about that um, later on after. All right, and so like Sheila said, All right, I am affordable, but uh, you wanna take it over again? Okay. I'll jump on in. Um, I will tell you my internet is unstable. I keep getting these little messages. So if I sound weird at any point, Amanda, just jump on in and anyway, and save, save me from my bad internet. Um, so um, as I said earlier, we are intentionally um, priced differently than the rest of the university, lower um, than the rest of the university. So our tuition rate is based per credit hour. So it's $576 per credit hour. Um, and our courses are three credit hours. So um, to take a class at Tulane is a little over, at Tulane SOAP is a little over $1,500 a class. And we have very, very, very nominal fees each semester on top of that. So um, thank you. Amanda just put um, her, her contact information in the chat. So um, most of our students take between one and two classes per semester. So that'll be anywhere between $1,500 or a little over $3,000 for two classes. And of course, your PTK scholarship, if you're applying for financial aid, which most of our students do, will help fill the gap if the financial aid doesn't totally cover everything that you need. Um, definitely fill out your FAFSA form. You will need to fill out that form. And I always tell students to start the FAFSA form at the same time that you start your application for admission. Don't wait until after you apply the FAFSA ask for a lot of different information and it can take a few weeks to complete it. So go ahead and just get it started. Um, and then um, we do offer other types of aid to our students, federal grants and loan are what most of our students get. Um, but then we do have 20% discounts um, for um, different types of students, um, active duty military, K through 12 instructional, um, you know, teachers, current teachers. Um, and then also um, we have um, up, offer up to 24 credits for life experience, which is 
what Amanda was talking about. So um, that could be a lot of courses. So for instance, if you are working at the fire department and you do have one or two different areas of expertise that translate to the same knowledge blocks as certain classes, and you can demonstrate that you already have that information based on the work that you've been doing, you can save those two classes. And if each class is $1,500 and you can save two classes, that's a saving of $3,000. So that's just a different way to look at um, another way to be able to save time and I mean, to be able to save money. And it's also a savings of time because if you don't have to save those courses, then you're that much um, moving that much more quickly towards graduation. So a little bit of information on the next slide um, about our um, application process. Um, so we try to make applying as simple as possible. It's not meant to be a tricky process. There's no like hidden agenda, um, but students from time to time have questions about the application. And we always tell um, prospective students, please don't be shy reach out. We want to hear from you. Um, our application is electronic and you get to it by going to our website, sopa.tulane.edu. That is on the bottom of this slide. When you go to our website, there's a big button at the top of the, at the very top of the page that says apply. Click that. It will ask you to put in um, your email address and come up with a password and that will open you up to our application portal. Um, our application does not require a ton of information. We do um, need to have a copy of a current valid um, ID. For most folks, that means just taking a, a picture on your phone of your um, of your driver's license or your passport, and you can go ahead and upload that. Um, we will need transcripts from the schools which you're attending now or any other school that you've received um, college credit for. Um, the best way to get those to us is to send them to us electronically. Most registrar's office offices will allow you to just go onto their website and say, I want to send my transcript to Tulane SOPA. There's a drop down menu. You click Tulane School of Professional Advancement. You pay the $10 or whatever it is at your school's registrar's office. And they um, send those to us in about 24 hours, 24 to 48. It's really the fastest way and the easiest way. You can send US Postal Service, but it takes a little bit longer. And sometimes they do get lost. They get sent to other departments on campus. And so I think electronic is best. Um, there is a $40 application fee, but we actually captured the attendance of everybody who attends our webinars. And as kind of a thank you for coming at the end of your very long work day, I'm sure, we'll waive that application fee electronically. So that's really our application process. Um, but if you have any questions as you move through, let me know. Um, we are still accepting applications if you want to start in the fall, which um, our application deadline is August 1. It is a little bit around the corner, but you still have time. Um, it doesn't take a very long time to fill out our undergraduate application. So if you can submit it to us by August 1, we would love to have you join us when classes start in August. If you're thinking ahead to spring, our application deadline is January 1, or if you wanna start um, in the next summer term, May 1 is our application deadline. Um, we do have early enrollment scholarships. It's a little too late for the fall to get the early enrollment scholarship, but for January, if you get your application in and um, register for classes by December 1st, you will get the scholarship. And if you're looking for the summer term, if you get your application in and enroll for classes by April 15th, you'll get a $200 scholarship. This is automatic. It's for any first time student who it's their first semester, they get admitted and they enroll by these early scholarships. It's our way of encouraging students to apply early. Um, and also um, just to give you a little bit of a financial advantage for your first semester. So um, no reason not to go ahead and get that money. So um, that is kind of all the formal information. My contact information is on the screen. Feel free to send me an email if you have any questions, but um, we're also available if you all just wanna take yourself off mute if you have a question tonight. It's, um, so since I'm supposed to graduate in December from Delgado, when do you recommend, when can I apply? Cause I know 
I've, I've been working with um i think his name's mr rahe dan yeah. um bless that man's soul he's been dealing with me for like the last year that i'm trying to get wrapped up in delgado um but so when would when when can i apply even though i'm not finished at delgado so you can apply now. Um, so you would, that would be the spring application. Um, th there's a little bit, this is probably a little bit too technical, but I'm going to go into it with you, Rachel, anyway, because I feel like you can handle it. So what we really need is your, in order for you to register for classes, normally we need your graduation. We need like your final um, transcript with your graduation dates. But I would tell you, go ahead and apply for spring. Do it now because then you can take advantage of um, the early enrollment scholarship. Why not get an extra $200 for your first semester, right? Well, what we do is we take $200 off your first semester's tuition bill. So you might as well save that $200. And then if we can't get your um, your uh, transcript in time, which we probably won't be able to, we can allow you to register for the spring semester only without that final transcript, but we're going to need it for the next semester. We can't let you go more than one semester without um, having proof that you've graduated, but go ahead and, and just get it in and we'll work with you on that. And then, um, then you don't lose any momentum, right? Like you finish up in January and you start in, um, I mean, you finish yeah, up. And actually in I'm graduating from Delgado with like a bunch of extra classes because y'all don't accept some. And it's like ones that I need to get this stupid associates. And just in case, if I don't wind up getting my bachelor's, I at least want to have my associates. So it's, yeah. it's whatever. No, um, you're going to get your bachelor's. You're going to, you're going to do it. You're going to do it. <laughs> Um, so if I, cause I am petrified from going from Delgado to like an actual legit school and I wasn't planning on taking a, probably a full course load the first semester, can I still get the PTK scholarship if I'm like full credit the next semester? Yeah, Amanda, that it, that it, it's fine. Correct. I think they have to be full time, but I don't know if there's something that we can do on the on the different end to to waive that. Is what I'm not sure. Um, so, is what is full time? Is it nine credits? Twelve. Twelve credits. Okay, so that's four classes, Rachel. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, then we'll we'll see. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see how this works out. Well, I have, I have two teenage sons and I'm working a full-time job. So four classes is very hard for me to manage. I mean, it's not the end of the world. Either way, I get a discount from, for working for the parish, but um, as much money as possible would be lovely. Totally. Totally. Well, I would definitely tell you to go ahead and apply for the spring because if you, if you register early, you'll get the $200 early registration scholarship. Reach out. So this is what I need you to do, Rachel. When Apply to the school. Get in. And then when you start getting the emails about registration, email me and be like, remember, I was on the PTK scholarship thing. You're not going to have my final transcript. I'm going to need you to lift the transcript hold okay. just for the first semester. Just remind me and we'll totally do that. Okay. Okay, I have a question. So yeah. uh, in review of the PTK scholarship, I'm not sure I would um, qualify because I have a bachelor's already. It seems like you have to be in transition to or in process. So are there any other scholarships that I can apply for possibly? You should tell me where you went undergrad. Dillard University. That's what I thought. So mm -hmm. we have, uh, it's the end of the day and I actually have a head cold. And so I'm, I, I thought I heard you say Dillard, but I had to confirm. Mm -hmm. um, so we actually, so you would be coming back for, um, you're interested in the post-baccalaureate certificate? Correct. In, in uh, yeah. So um, I believe that we can work with you because we have, um, a um, scholarship 
for students, a 20% discount for students who received their um, either AA or their bachelor's degree at mm -hmm. uh, HBCUs. Okay. So let me work with you to see if you can get that 20%. That's fine. That's fine. So okay. either, either way, I think that will, that you'll end up being able to take advantage. Okay. Thank you. All right. Absolutely. All right. These are all fantastic questions. Any other, any other thing that we can answer for you? My dog's panting. I'm sorry. He's like on the couch <laughs> next to me. Um, um, all right. Well, I want to thank you all. Please um, hold on to our contact information. Reach out, email either me or Amanda, and um, go ahead and get those applications in. And then, um, you know, anything else. We And we also read our applications on a rolling basis. So as soon as they're complete, we review them and get admissions decisions out. So um, there's no advantage to holding off on getting it in. Go ahead and get them in as soon as possible, and then we can get you your admissions decision. So with that said, um, we thank you all for being here. And more importantly, we hope to welcome you to campus very soon. But um, thank you very much. And we hope that y'all have a great night. Thank you. Y'all too. Thank Absolutely. you. Good night. Good night. Sounds good. good.